Be mindful of hobosexuals. They are people who only enter relationships with you to have some place to stay. No one cuddles better than a person who doesn't want to go back to their mothers. You know what I was thinking, and something that I wish my parents prepared me for, was how predatory men can really be once you start dating. And in this instance, I'm specifically talking about hobosexuals or men who are trying to use you to stay at your house. I moved out at a young age. I had my own place by the time I was 20 years old. And shortly after I moved into my first apartment, a man was living with me. Now, this is my first real official relationship. So I was really naive. And also, I think that I was so high off the freedom of having my own place that... I was just excited to be able to have a man over. When a guy is constantly telling you about how bad his home life is and how much he doesn't get along with his parents or whoever he lives with, he is probably building you up to feel bad for him so that he can show up at your door with the suitcase. The thing about men is they usually don't have a problem setting boundaries and letting you know, okay, it's time for you to go. You've been in my space for too long and I need my solitude back. But with us, we tend to just do whatever we can to make them feel comfortable and make them feel appeased. But the fact is, if I'm paying the rent, when it's time to go, I don't need a rhyme or reason to eject you. So my advice would be have very, and I mean extremely strong boundaries about when and for how long a man is welcome in your home. And honestly, I really want to say they shouldn't be welcome in your home. Because apart from them possibly trying to move in with you, it's really a safety threat. And I really do mean it's really a safety threat. Found a woman I liked and moved in after a few weeks. Things were going great, so she tried to make it official. She asked me to marry her. I declined. Then she asked me for half of the rent. She's threatening my future homelessness to get an engagement advice. You homosexuals must be stopped. Y'all gotta be stopped because y'all moving in with people y'all really don't like like that. Just for shelter. You there just for a warm bed, warm ass, and warm meals. And you don't even want to pay half of the rent. So you won't marry her, which is understandable because you only knew each other for a few weeks. But you ain't even trying to help with no rent. She got to throw you in the streets. You belong back to the streets. Stop moving in with people you barely know. This is how people find find up on Snap, the ID channel. A hobosexual refers to someone who only dates you with the motive to find somewhere to stay. But what are some other signs to look out for? What are some signs that your man is a hobosexual? So I listed it out on this cute little paper. Hopefully you can read it if it's too small, sorry. I'll, I'll read it out loud. So the first thing is he has never had his own place and held his own. And it was convenient and just made sense for him to move in with you. Another sign that that man is a hobosexual is at the beginning of a talking phase, the phase when you're supposed to be getting to know each other, he's already sharing his drama and baggage. A man wouldn't open up to his dream girl about being broke in a hot mess because he knows how bad it looks. However, a hobosexual is banking on you feeling bad for him so he can use you. Unlike a man who thinks you're his dream girl, he's not concerned much with looking like he has his life together. He's banking on you liking him and feeling so bad for him that you want to be Captain save -a -ho and help him put his life together. Ever. Help him build. Pour your life force into him as we women naturally do with the men that we love. With nothing in exchange but penis and personality. Maybe a few dates in the beginning? Maybe he'll pay for your nails to get done or a bill or two to get in your good graces. But once he does, he'll quickly drop the act and still expect for you to pour into him consistently and benefit him. With all the many ways that having a good woman benefits a man. Suddenly he'll lose his job. Suddenly he'll be short on money. Something sudden will happen to where he can't consistently put in the effort. He can't keep doing the things he was initially doing in the beginning of the relationship because it was all an act to get what he wanted from you. Another sign that man is a hobosexual is he moves things super fast in the beginning of your relationship. He wants to see you multiple days a week. He texts you 24 seven. He'll do whatever it takes to make you feel like he's infatuated with you so you quickly feel infatuated with him. He love bombs you so he can quickly evolve the relationship and quickly get what he really wants from you. Another sign that man is a hobosexual sexual is he's extremely out of your league when i was at my biggest not saying there's anything wrong with being big but when i was at my biggest and i wasn't putting any efforts towards my looks i wasn't really trying at all i wore baggy clothes when i was looking a hot mess is when i attracted the most men and they were all 
Dusty's looking to take advantage of me and my apartment. A lot of these guys who know that they're a 10 will go after twos and go after threes, boast them up, make them feel like tens, make them feel like the luckiest girl in the world because they got a nice handsome man out of all the women that they can get. Why do you think they're personally pursuing you? Like let's really dissect the situation from a different lens here. Men are attracted. The first thing that attracts a man is a woman's looks. I'm not saying it's impossible to attract a 10 if you're a two or a three and you're not put together, but this guy's a 10, he can get himself a 10 too. Yet he wants to be with you at your lowest point. I'm still big, I still got work to do. But at the end of the day, when I was attracting the most men, I let myself go. I was attracting predators who were looking for insecure women that let themselves go because insecure women accept more BS than women with confidence and not know their worth. This man may look like a 10, but internally, the way his life is, is a two, is a three, is a zero most cases. Some of them literally will be homeless waiting on the next insecure woman who's desperate to have some type of affection. So much so that they don't have this discernment to look out for homosexuals that will put on an act pretending to want to date you just to get in your good graces and use you for your space to live in. Another sign that man is a homosexual is he's never taking a woman out on a nice date or has not taken a woman out on a date in years. If you have to instruct this man to take you on an actual date, if the first suggestion this man has is to chill, is, you know, you know, whatever you want to do, he has never taken the lead to properly take a lady on a date. He makes it seem like you're asking for too much by asking him to take you on a date. He is most likely, if he's not a hobosexual, he's a discounter. He's someone that looks for women that he can discount and get with for as little effort as possible, which is just as worse because a woman's time, a woman's energy is precious and it's powerful when in it for a long time. We are natural nurturers. We have heaven in between our legs and you are trying to get in them for a coffee date. You're trying to have me devote myself to you in exchange for chilling immediately now. And another sign that this man is a homosexual is he asks multiple questions about where you work and who you live with. Those aren't relevant concerns at the beginning of getting to know someone unless they have other intentions for you than courting and dating you. If the man that you're talking to exemplify these signs have done these things. There is a possibility that he's not a homosexual and this applies also to men who are just using you to get access to the heaven in between your legs. And you might be a woman who's thinking, there's no way a man will lie and say that he loves me. A man will do all these things and say all these things. He's planning this trip and you know, he looks into my eyes and says that I'm the one. Men, I, I would need to express that men will say absolutely anything to get what they want. Men think and act completely differently, function completely differently than women. So you as a woman thinking like, you know, I could never, I would never put in that much effort and lie and put on a whole facade and personality to just have sex with someone. That's you as a woman who wants love, who wants safety, who wants protection, who wants security. That's not how men think who are acting on survival and need sex like water and need shelter because they can't afford or at least they don't want to put any effort to afford their own place. I'm not saying all men are liars. I'm just generalizing what a lot of men do. So use your own discernment and beware. You're in for scare. Okay, let's, let's get back to the video. Basically what you do is you go over to girl house. You know what I'm saying? This is the first time she let you come through. You know what I'm saying? You gotta hit her at her house the first time. This is the only way the plan is gonna work. So you get her to let you come over there and hit her at her crib. You dog it down. You feel me? Beat the doonies all the way down. You feel me? And then fall asleep. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta make sure it's on a day that you know she gotta go to work in the morning. You feel me? So you come over there kill it fall asleep if she wake up in the morning and just go to work and don't wake you up and tell you to leave or nothing like that then just don't never leave this is the dating scene right now you told me you love me i had to i was homeless <laughs> i call that 
hobosexual. H O B O sexual. I tried to pay, he begged me to stay. Babe, I'm not staying, I just wanna play. In the party, you just wanna rock. Are you gaslighting this woman in her comment section about how she should feel bad for not giving this man the time of day because he's homeless? That's not what she wants, nor any woman needs. The menu day should be gainfully employed. Okay, he should be able to provide for himself and for um, the woman he is courting. That is his responsibility. He's not meeting that need if he's homeless. He has other problems. And his problem to find shelter is not her problem. That's not what she wants. It's not what she's looking for. And no one deserves to take care of someone with that huge baggage on them. So do not make anyone feel bad for not wanting to deal with that. It's like a tactic men use to lure women in so they can find shelter don't be a victim don't be a placeholder because he knows what she brings to the table it's a lot of men out here that don't even want to be with the woman they just don't want nobody else to have her because they haven't found no one else to replace her yet most men don't want to be with her they just in survival mode they need somewhere to stay they're using her for something rather it's physically emotionally whatever it is he's using her a lot of loyal, good women lose themselves because they emotionally invested into this one man and they're not one of those girls to just hop on this person, hop on this person, hop on to this person. So, And he knows that and he used that as his advantage to manipulate her, to make her feel small, some, maybe make her feel ugly, make her feel like she's not worthy enough for another man to come in and take your spot. And he's going to keep on draining her until someone else come along that he really likes or he really want to invest his time into and then leave her out to dry and be by herself. And that is a selfish man. Meet me at the top. Then they have the nerve to ask what I bring to the table in a relationship as if I didn't buy the whole entire tip. Exactly, exactly. I'm, st I'm not trying to be a man basher, but there are guys who do this and it's not okay. The audacity, it'll be the homosexuals that have the most audacity of them all. Hey, if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name's Malaysia and this channel is here to help women to create their best life and become their best selves. If you're on a path of creating your best life and becoming your best self, then subscribe to join my community because I post every single week, if not a full video, I usually live stream some weeks. I've seen this way too much, especially in the black community. It's normalized to the point where if you want something otherwise, if it's like foreign, I'm looked at as a foreign entity for wanting a provider as a black woman and not housing a homosexual. And I've had people in my family try to bring me down for not having a boyfriend, not being with, living with a man. And it's because I refuse to house a homosexual. <laughs> I'm specifically looking for a man that can pour into my cup and that isn't going to deplete me because I've experienced being depleted and I've seen too many women of all races get depleted by homosexuals. And it always, it always rubbed me the wrong way. So I'm actually gonna react to a TikTok and the comments in a TikTok just so I can share how this is not a singular experience. This is something that happens a lot. And in order for a pattern to stop, and in order for something to stop happening, someone's got to put their foot down. Someone's got to be the one to say, no, I'm not dealing with this anymore. I expect more for myself. And even if it makes you look crazy, you're an outcast, you're a, you're a single cat dog lady, you'll never find a man being that selfish and wanting all those things. Like at the end of the day, like how are we going to get out of this stage of dealing with homosexuals if we keep entertaining that? I know for some people it may not be realistic to put your foot down on something that's socially accepted and pushed in certain communities, but that'll never change if we don't as women, if we keep allowing for men to do this. And not everything's black and white. I know there's certain circumstances where like a man really does need a woman to build with. And you know, things happen to men just as much as they happen to women. Like not every man is a leader. Not every man has the opportunities as other men or as other women. But at the end of the day, excuses are excuses. Are you gonna entertain them or are you gonna put your foot down? And I'm specifically making this video for women who have a community of people where this is normalized and people are pushing you to also do this, but it doesn't align with you either. Those that have learned the hard way have preached to me like, 
Yeah, I agree. Like, I wish I knew this when I was your age. So I didn't let this man ruin my life, impregnate me, leave me. And I'm not shaming those who are in that situation. I am simply spreading awareness so other women can avoid being in that same predicament, having a homosexual ruin their life because they were blinded by love instead of logic of dating a homosexual who really doesn't do much for you but deplete you. Also after reacting to the comments and this TikTok, I want to share a story time of my own of when I've I've dealt with multiple homosexuals and I know I cut it immediately. Immediately now. So let's get into this video. Don't let a man ever find out you live on your own. They're going to be standing in that corner of the room. You got all this space I can't stay? You can't all, you got all this space I can't stay. So now some of the comments that I read throughout this video, they're so out of pocket. Like, I feel so bad. People were commenting about the comments because it's ridiculous. My homeless baby daddy once brought all his belongings from the place he was kicked out of to my new house I bought alone. I had one look at the spare bedroom and said, I can live here. Live where? I still live at home. It's just split into apartments. I don't know what he was on. I said I ain't running no homeless soup kitchen. The man was was too stunned to speak. <laughs> Another comment saying, why are you letting them know you live on your own? True. 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 And they're always trying to turn your Barbie dream house into a Mojo Dojo Casa house. Is it just my imagination that these Mojo Dojo Casa houses just get dreamier? That's because they're dream houses, mother <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me! He was like, for the house, I was thinking we could. Who is we? This is my house. <laughs> I actually had, that happened to me once. I had this man who came over to help me. I asked him to come, cause we already had like, we we're doing business together. And I asked him to like build something for me as a favor. Cause I thought he was hot, you know? I was just trying to find an excuse to like have him over. And it became a routine. And he really got in my, he was really trying to get in my good graces. Like he'd bring champagne every time he came over and he would do a strip show for me. He was so freaking handsome. I'm talking like model-esque handsome. He was a complete, like I, <sighs> like <laughs> and i remember he saw my room and he was like your tv my tv is like right across from my bed like i'm looking at it right now and he was like your tv should go um you should have put it in the middle of the wall so it's easier to see all throughout your room and i'm like okay cool but i decided to put it i decided to put it here because i think it's just convenient having the tv where my bed is because i like to go to bed watching youtube and tv some nights it's like who are you <laughs> to be telling me where I should be putting my furniture and I didn't peep it until later what was really going on um so that comment I can relate to that oh he said my room was too pink for a man <laughs> I said good thing a man doesn't sleep here my apartment is definitely the same way my username isn't just a YouTube princess I literally live like a princess I have little tea parties and <laughs> My apartment, my room, my bedroom looks very like cottage core, like Prince Disney princess, like girly. One guy was like, I don't know if I can move to the suburbs. Sir, you're not invited. <laughs> They're just, I've noticed that homosexuals are very slick. They'll like throw in subtle hints that they want to live with you. And if you don't catch them, if you don't like put them in their place, it will escalate to them showing up with their stuff and just never leaving, which is a comment I saw earlier. He was on the phone with his homie and said, I'm at the house. The house? Whose house? My house? <laughs> Uh. I always thought this would be our house. <sighs> oh. <laughs> Had one tell me at least I know I can come here until I find another place. Who said that? <laughs> Then they have the nerve to ask what I bring to the table in a relationship as if I didn't buy the whole entire tip. Exactly, exactly. I'm st I'm not trying to be a man basher, but there are guys who do this and it's not okay. The audacity, it'll be the homosexuals that have the most audacity of them all. And if you don't have enough self-love for yourself and awareness to realize it and spot it and stop it in its tracks, you will be dragged through those tracks. No, get out of my Barbie dream house. <laughs> El Mafeo, no one time a dude told me, how can I trust you if you live alone? We should work on living together. At, get out. Oh, that's clever. That's a clever one. I'm sure that worked for a lot of people. Say, you made a big pot of chili and I can't have any blocked because did you buy the pot or the beef? 
I am all for being generous, but I hate that it's normalized for women to do backflips and cartwheels. Not even just not even just in real life. In the media, you see TV characters doing backflips and cartwheels and all these intricate techniques and just revolving their whole lives around men that haven't did anything for them as if we don't have any other purpose like as if we can't be happy on our own without a man as if we're supposed to chase them you gotta be kidding she washed her car yesterday oh no she's not Yep, she's bringing out the big guns. You better get over there. She's wearing cotton. What am I supposed to say to Mike? I saw you half naked and I thought I'd drop by. What's that? A piece of Mike's junk man we got by mistake. I held on to it in case of an emergency. God bless you. It's ass backwards. <sighs> I'm starting to realize a lot of things in this world is ass backwards, but that's for another video. <laughs> Not even Brent, I own a 600,000 house. Get a girl. <laughs> Not even right. I own a six hundred thousand dollar house by myself. That's why any man who wants me has to have something similar. That's smart. Because low key, men have so many discussions about gold diggers and how they need to look out for gold diggers. But women are natural nurturers and givers, and we just want to be in love. Whereas men are the real gold diggers because they are initially pursuing you to get in between your legs. Like a man that is interested in you wants to get into Punani. Men will lie and say anything. They'll come up with a whole personality and drag you along for a whole year just to get inside of a Punani. It happens all the time. So who's the real gold diggers? <laughs> People are always talking about gold digging women. In 2023, it's an epidemic of dudes trying to come up off women. For sure. <laughs> Girls spending 700 on their hair, 200 on their nails, yep. still got the car. Yep. Bro, they spending of the bag. The grimy dudes out here, they watching y'all Instagram, taking this trip. She buying this, she buying that. Dude, she got a man? If yep. she ain't got no man, I'm finna try to bag her because she finna blow this bread on me. See, fellas, this is how you properly use two podcast microphones. Now, these two gentlemen are definitely onto something. The hey, big money, you the one with all the money. I'm trying to get like you, fellas. They are watching. They are constantly looking at your Instagram, your Instagram story. They are watching your feed. Now, the kind of man that is asking you too many questions about your finances should be a red flag for you. Some of these men are also looking for a big, strong provider. Don't let that be useless. Do not provide that man with specifics about the money that you make. He doesn't need the details. He doesn't need to know how many dollars and how many cents. It's none of his business. You know, there are some men that look for women who can help them to facilitate their lifestyle. They see you in the high rise and they can't afford the high rise alone. So they want to be your man long enough for them to get in there. They want to be your man long enough for them to drive your car. They want to be your man long enough to go on that vacation. They, they see you taking these trips and they see you with all of this money and they see themselves in your lifestyle. There are some men out there that are going to see you as a come up or an opportunity. When you are a successful woman, you have to be very careful when you're dealing with men who don't have as much as you do. Make sure that it's actually you that they want. You're not starting off uh, volunteering to pay for dinner, volunteering to take him on trips, buying him things. Do not lead with money if you don't want to be used for money that goes for men and women make sure that even if you don't spend a single dime on this man that his feelings don't change we don't want a man who's only nice to you when you're giving him money only nice to you when dinner is your treat only nice to you when he can live with you rent free only nice to you when he can uh, use your car we're not looking for conditional relationships we are not buying love make sure that he loves you even if you don't give him a single cent i feel like gold diggers isn't the best word to describe women who want men to provide like gold diggers don't care about nothing but money but those who do 
require some sense of investment is balancing the scales. It's like an even exchange, you know, like you're coming into my life, pursuing me. You want me to exclusively be with you during my fertile years, the time I can't get back or it's easiest for me to conceive a child. If I spend five years with you and you decide to break up with me and now I'm in my 30s and <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm less valuable. What do I? what does that leave me like what did I get out of that relationship versus what that man got out of a relationship and I feel like that's why a lot of women are scorned and feel like they can't get over certain dudes because they spent so much time giving with nothing in return so they feel like okay well I gave all this stuff so I might as well stay with him because we've spent all this time together and I've already given him this much and I don't want to start over I'm gonna continuously waste more time because I already wasted time. <laughs> so might as well just continue to waste time forever until he leaves me or until I leave him. So how come a guy can really want us and really want to make it work and really like us, but then it doesn't work and then we turn around and we see them making it work with somebody else? Because I never really wanted that woman. One of the many luxuries men have that women don't is the luxury of time. Men are encouraged to take their time to think things through, to not rush things. Women, on the other hand, are raised to believe that time is fleeting, that it's precious. As a result, men don't care about wasting their time or anybody else's. Men don't suddenly become capable of giving a woman what she wants. He's always capable of it, he just decides to whom and when he wants to give it. In the meantime, he'll gladly waste some woman's time and treat her as a placeholder while he explores his options. And he does that by acting like a committed partner, knowing that a woman will pay more attention to his actions than his words. My roommate guy was like, I hate sleeping on bug beds at my mom's. Like he ain't 32. <laughs> I've noticed a lot of guys will live with their parents until they're like in their 30s, 40s even. And I'm not bashing men. I understand how that could happen. But it's like when you go and target a woman who does have her life together and then expects all of their like I... Men called me stuck up when I cut them off for not having a home or a car and they were older than me. My aunties put me on game long ago. That's good. I learned from the mistakes of people I've seen and aunties on the internet. Um, sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> if he doesn't have his own place, he couldn't step foot in mine. I actually don't, I usually am not someone who's judgmental about that. I, I've always like, didn't really care, it's just, it becomes an issue when you are expecting things from me and you're like not doing anything but taking things from me. And like, because we're talking, you think you own the things that I own. And you're also asking for submission and you're also asking for exclusivity. It's like, why would I give myself exclusively to you and you're not doing anything for me? If I can do everything myself and you're just here taking, it doesn't make any sense. And I feel like a lot of women get trapped with hobosexuals because in the beginning they will have a job. And then once they get comfy living with a woman, they lose it and they keep losing it and just live and leech off of women. And I'm not saying if you're a woman who has a man living with you, he's a hobosexual. Like every circumstance is different. Nothing is black and white. I'm not shaming those who house homosexuals or who are dating homosexuals i'm just simply trying to spread awareness and share how common it is and express how i, I just don't think it should be so common one joked he would move in with me because his lease was ending in the same week i ran so fast block delete remove everything in the book <laughs> i literally stopped talking to a man because he was making plans of what to do in my apartment while i was at work <sighs> I'm telling you, it's the audacity. <laughs> Facts. I had a man try to do this to me two years ago. She said he would contribute $300. Sir, my rent is $1,500. You know what? He tried. My grandfather told me don't even let a man bring a toothbrush when I come in for his place. Actually, if I really like a guy, 
I would be like, oh my god, he's trying to wreck his territory. Like, I'm a hopeless romantic, so, like, my dumb ass would be like, y leave more things. <laughs> like, I'm really sturdy with my boundaries and standards, so I, I'll let him leave his toothbrush. I think one guy I, I liked, I let him leave his toothpaste, and I was like, oh my god, we're like that. <laughs> but I wasn't, like, stressed that he was trying to move in. I can, I have really great discernment to where I don't really overreact like that. <laughs> This guy slept over when I had to work. The next morning he said, it's okay, just leave me a key and I'll lock the door when I wake up. Excuse me? You don't feel scared at night? You know, it's really hard feeling scared at night when you have a hammer underneath your pillow, a knife, a taser, and all the things that can paralyze a man if he really tried it. Yeah, he was, he was not slick with the, I'm going to be staying here more because it's closer to work. I would probably fall for that, I'm not gonna lie. If I really liked the guy, I'd be like, okay. But I, I'll know when to stop it in its tracks. I honestly, I was dating a guy where I wish he would come over more and cuddle me more and stuff. And I guess it eventually leads to you wanting to live with them. So that's why I'm not really so judgmental of those who have homosexuals living with them because it's like, it benefits a woman in some way, obviously, having a man live with you. Like, you have some protection, you have a constant cuddle buddy, and it's nice. But I'm not playing house with someone who isn't my husband. It doesn't make any sense to me. That's just me. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to lose some subscribers with this because I know not everyone's going to agree, but I feel like you don't have to agree with everything someone says in order to like them as a creator and support them like not everyone's going to have the same opinions as you if you can't separate certain things that you disagree from a creator and you just have to completely stop following a creator because you just don't agree with one thing that they f believe i just don't think that's productive those who are cookie cutter those creators who aren't controversial at all who don't have any unpopular opinions usually low-key have the most unpopular opinions are the most controversial and they're just hiding it for the sake of not stirring the pot and keeping their following keeping the peace you know and it's like realistically we all have differences and we all have different opinions like I'm not going to conform just for the sake of being liked because regardless, you're not gonna be liked by someone just by who you are and what you believe in, even if it's something good. Even if it's something that helps your higher good, there's always gonna be someone who's triggered. That's like, oh, who does she think she is? She thinks she's better than that. Like, I just, at some point you learn to not care. <laughs> And I'm at that point. But I do have moments where I'm like editing a video and I'm just like, Ugh. like I, I, lately the content I've been posting, I'm just like, Ugh. I get a little wary because <sighs> because because there are more people that vibe with what you believe in and that love you for who you are than people who dislike you for who you are and want you to be this cookie cutter thing that <laughs> makes everyone happy. It's just not gonna make you happy, in my opinion. In my opinion. Just a little tangent, just a little tangent for the haters. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna read a few more comments and I'm gonna get into my own story time. I have a few, but I'm only gonna share one. I may share, I may share two. Depending on my, my camera battery. A whole relationship ended because dude was mad about how I treated my dogs in my house. Sir, you are a guest. Literally, I had a guy, now that I think about it, I had a guy that I was talking to that was like, so, annoyed by my dog and she's like a squirrel like when <laughs> i admit when i have guests she's like she's the dog that jumps all over you but once you just like hug her you know acknowledge her she leaves you alone she's like the calmest dog ever she's not hyper the whole time and whenever i had this dude over he would like have me kick i would have to kick my dog out of my room because he didn't like dogs and it's like not like she's a pit bull and it got to the point where i'm just like listen if you can't figure out a way to like coincide and exist peacefully with my dog then you're not going to exist peacefully with me because every time you come over she's going to be here she's not ever going to like you if i'm over here kicking her out of my room every time you come over 
Like, you are a guest in our house. This is Pepsi's house. Pepsi runs this house. You can't respect the owner of the house. You gotta, you gots to go. You gots to go. <laughs> when I bought my home, my dad's first words were, do not let a man move in. He said, it's like moss to a flame. It literally is. Like, some guys will literally target insecure looking women and date them and make them feel like they're in love so they can finesse them to live with them and to be housed. Yep, hide your apartments, ladies. It's about to get cold outside. Mine keeps saying that people need to see a man come in and out of here. Like, I'm like, huh? <laughs> Someone commented to that saying, they're so creative, LOL. It's a trap. OMG, a guy I just met, not even 20 minutes later, he's talking about how he's in between apartments and asking if I live alone. Boy, please. You know, now that I think about it, this happened to me too. I tried out dating sites just because I don't go out much and I wanted to see what was there. And I remember I met someone on a date and like one of the first conversations we had was how he was looking for a roommate as if he was specifically on Tinder to find a woman that was willing to be his roommate. He was looking for someone to take out on a date and that would like him enough to be like, oh yeah, you know, you can live with me. Like, I mean, I guess that could work, but... I wanted Barbie till Ken, but I don't want you here. That Barbie movie, Loki, is literally what is going on right now. Be mindful of your keys, ladies. One day they will be in your house and you didn't let them in. That's when the cops show up and you don't even know why you're being arrested. <laughs> A wise woman once said, never show a man where your back cave is and I listen. Tell them your dad pays all of your rent and that he's very protective. That's smart. I usually say I have a roommate. Even when I've said I had a roommate, let's get into the story time. I had, <laughs> I had um, this guy I was really close friends with and we became, we kind of, we kind of became intimate. I thought I'd try the whole friends with benefit thing. Not for me, but I was like, I want to try. I want to see if it's for me. And I, I don't know. He just became a complete jerk when we were having those relations versus when I was his friends. It's like he treated me completely differently. It's like the disrespect meter was on absolute high and it led to me having to cut him off because he was just being so inconsiderate and rude. I remember after cutting him off for treating me really badly, lying to me and whatnot. After like a couple months, he called me and was like, my mom kicked me out and I have nowhere to go. He knew I had like my one bedroom apartment and everything. And he was just giving me this whole sob story about like how all his friends cut him off. And now he's calling me because he has no one else. And I'm like, I already cut you off. So you're basically admitting to the only reason why you are contacting me is because you have no one else. So if you had someone else, you wouldn't have contacted me. You're literally snitching on yourself that you wouldn't even be interested in a friendship with me if it wasn't for you being in this predicament. And then he asked me how I was doing. And after I answered, he swiftly was like, do you need a roommate? And I was like, no. And I said it so harshly. He was like, damn. You said that pretty harshly. And it's because the little girl in me who vowed to never, <laughs> ever deal with the homosexual relations was like, <laughs> I couldn't even, I didn't even expect for it to come out that way. It just came out extremely harsh because I just, my inner child was like, no, no, I do not need a roommate. <laughs> and he went back to his mom's house because he wasn't willing to get his own place and like to do work to get his own place. He was looking for a woman to let him live with for free. And I'm just not that woman. And um, getting to like the last comment I read prior to that, when we were friends, I was planning to move with my friend and we were gonna get an apartment together and be roommates. And I remember he was like, you guys should like, let me live with you guys. And this is like after I stopped sexual relations with this guy and he had a girlfriend. He had actually, he was engaged. He was like, you should let me live with you too. And I explained to him like, you know, my friend doesn't feel comfortable with that and I don't feel comfortable with that. We've literally had sexual relations. How would your fiance feel about that? And he was like, oh, she doesn't have to know. I'm like, uh-uh, cause like, I don't even condone that. That's not something I would want 
my man to do. So why would I allow you? Why would I be an accomplice to you doing that to another woman? I'm a girl's girls. You can do that with someone else, but you're not going to do that with me. No matter how much I tried to explain it to him, how it just wouldn't work, he kept convincing me every phone conversation, you know, you should let me live with you. And he would still flirt with me, even though we weren't talking. And I'm like, dude, you are not living with us. <laughs> so that comment kind of reminded me of that. That's my little hobosexual story time. I have more. I've seen a lot. I had a friend that actually, she had a boyfriend move in with her. They both had jobs. And as soon as he moved in, he lost his job. And they had to try so hard to get him to apply to new jobs. And he would just play video games all day. And eventually he moved his mom into her apartment. So now it was him and his mom. And it was like to the point where she struggled to make and call the shots in her own home because her boyfriend's mom was like calling all the shots and she was like trying to figure out how to simply lay down boundaries with his mother. Like I, that's how far it can go. That's how far it can get if you don't have strong boundaries and standards. If you're too blinded by love, you'll allow anything and you won't realize it until it's too late. And you're just like, oh, well, I've already spent so much time with him and it's just so hard to leave. Like, duh, 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 I'm already too attached. Like, don't. <laughs> if you are a woman who lives alone, don't, don't. Yeah, that's, that's my, my little PSA. You know, I was thinking as I've been transitioning into content for women to create their best life and become their best selves, I just really wanted to talk to the young woman who might be susceptible to this to just be aware and know how to prevent something like this. I hope this video helps someone. I know it definitely triggered someone, <laughs> but that's not the intention of the video. The intention of the video is to spread awareness to a problem that needs to be solved. Have you ever encountered a hobosexual? <laughs> if so, share your stories in the comments. And make sure to subscribe, give this video a like, and I will see you in the next video.